and we're good to go. Sounds good. So, Silencio. Oh, wanna... <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry. Welcome I thought... to Grand Simo Oh, my down. God. That was beautiful. How long do you no. think it would have gone? A while. Because what I thought, Jake, I thought you were going to end recording for the test and oh. then start a new one for the episode. So I was just waiting for Jake to stop the recording and then, then we could do the, the right one. I'm staring Welcome at Ryan to... going. Is this a bit? Is he doing a bit? Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial <laughs> podcast for official sumo fans. Well, somebody knows how to start a show here at no least. No kidding. <laughs> this is Ryan. This is Flarek. This is Jake. This is Mac. <laughs> and this is the Hatsu 20, Haru 2024 oh, recap. Uh, yeah, we got him. We got we him got off his man. Good. <laughs> I, I'm going to make that mistake. At least once per year, every year with these two boshes. They, they put know the what they two did. H's back to back, then the two N's back to back. It's just not it's, fair. It's like my two nieces, Hayden and Hannah, born back to back. You're going to mess their names up when you're talking to them <laughs> yeah. at least once upon a visit. See, now uh, so, we're going to get comments from Ryan's family going, wait, he doesn't know his niece's names? I know Ryan their is names. Now disinherited, disowned. My family listens to this podcast. Yeah. You're so funny, Mac. <laughs> Mac is truly the funny man of the podcast. Okay. Oh, hey. hey we, we've, we've got far more important things to talk about than me not remembering my niece's names properly. Uh, we'll come back to it. We'll do some yeah, callbacks, we'll but you're right. Back. We got to move on. We'll, yeah. we'll circle we'll back. We'll clip this. Uh, before, before we get to an absolutely historic and very probably once in a lifetime you show, we've got to get to our because what's more important than that than our patrons? We have three new patrons to give compliments to. Mac, why don't you kick us off? To Armando Subria, Mr. 100 himself. With his support, we continue to subject, I mean, grace everyone <laughs> with our nonsensical sumo banter. And thanks to him and everyone else in the Patreon. Also, thank you. The live stream has been on. <laughs> yes. Oh, were we doing an evil laugh bit? I think I, we got to we got to coordinate in, bits in. better. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on the bit list? <laughs> yes, it's on the bit list. <laughs> My bad. You, you need to refresh that before we start recording, Jake. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. We got to do Google Docs. They live update. That's how we should be doing our our stuff. Yeah. Not carrier pigeons. Uh, Andy A, <laughs> if you were a streamer and even if you sucked at video games, you're so charming. I'd watch. I'd watch you react, Andy, to videos all day. Ooh. Uh, for Nate T, seems like a cop out to say that it's not a coincidence having your GSB patron debut and Takeru Fuji's debut happen at the same time. But yes, that that is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and to all of our continuing patrons, but this time especially Mosho Gaeru. Your presence on the dojo radiates a strength and grace unmatched, reminiscent of the great Yokozuna of ages past. With each mighty clash, you command the ring with an unwavering determination, inspiring awe and admiration from all who witness your sumo prowess. Truly, you embody the epitome of sumo excellence, breaking records and forging a legacy destined to be etched in the annals of this storied sport. Sounds awfully chat GPT again, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what? No, I can come up with that all on my own. <laughs> so eloquent. Uh, I should and... be I should be angry, but honestly, I should just do the exact same thing. It's easier. <laughs> it's the easier thing to do. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Using technology to make podcasting easier is Flarex gimmick. Stop that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and because of these three new patrons, well, one is extra, but you know, we'll take yeah. it. Uh, we have reached 100 on. patrons for Grand Sumo Breakdown, which, how? And thank oh you God. so much. Uh, but because of that, as Mac mentioned, we unlocked the Grand Sumo Breakdown patron live stream where we're going to work on answering all of our accumulated questions that have been asked of us that we haven't had time uh, to answer yet. And so that is going to be a YouTube live stream that we're going to send a link out to to all of our patrons. You can check out the Discord if you're in there. We'll send it out there. Uh, if you're not on the Discord, we're going to put that out on the uh, Patreon 
website as well. So everybody in our patrons should be able to get that. The live chat and live stream will be restricted to patrons only. If you want to get in on that, you're not a patron, you want to chat with us live on that, feel free to sign up before we do the live stream, which will be on Saturday, March 30th at 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. That is 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. And I'm going to trust everybody to do <laughs> their own calculations for what that means for your own personal time. <laughs> You're going to oot. Thank, thank you for uh, clarifying daylight time. I mean, I, I would yeah. have been there an hour <laughs> late, early, dark, it's, I don't know, whatever. Off. It's stupid, <laughs> but we have to. We need to get rid of it. <laughs> no, no, Fair we enough. need to keep daylight time. Don't you dare well, take my sunlight during the summer. The one summer. that has sunlight in the <laughs> it, later in the day. So, yes, the one we're on now, that's yeah. the one that we should be on, right? Yes. Yeah. But stop changing it. It's dumb. Uh, so, this <laughs> live stream... The live portion of it will be closed to patrons only, so the live interaction that we'll have, that will be patron only, but we will be releasing the audio and video onto YouTube as if it was just another uh, episode of the podcast. So everybody will be able to listen to the conversation had there. It's just the patrons that will have the live chat portion available to them. Uh, and Jake, let's do a real quick Amazumo update before we oh, finally yeah. get into these results. I can burn through it pretty quick because we got plenty coming up. The Sakura Cup in Nashville is happening on April 6th. Uh, that one, I, I do know now, that will be streaming on the Tennessee Sumo Club YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be sending out links and all that as that gets closer. Um, the following week, Roller Town Showdown in Dallas. That will be streaming on the Dallas Sumo Club uh, YouTube channel, uh, featuring Jake and Flarick. I finally, uh, I got, I, this is the <laughs> second time in six months or so. I've gotten Flarek to leave the state to do sumo wrestling. So <laughs> it's uh, I, I hear you, this one is I hear this one is mostly just uh, hanging out a brewery with maybe some sumo on the side and, and Gagamaru will be there brewery. again. <laughs> yeah, yep. that was my yep. kryptonite. <laughs> and Gagamaru is is returning to Dallas. Oh, nice! Uh, in May we have the U.S. Sumo Open on the 11th. That's in Los Angeles. And on June 1st, we have the U.S. Sumo National Tournament. Uh, that's where you qualify to go to Worlds in Poland in the fall. Uh, so look for more information on all of those at sumo411.com. And I got to give a brief shout out to, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, our judo black belt friend Trent uh, was in town. So we brought him to sumo practice and he <laughs> casually threw us around exactly as easily as I thought he would. He just straight up stayed in the ring as the other three of us just kind of rotated through. <laughs> I think we all managed to beat him like one time over the course of like an hour of matches where he didn't take any breaks. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous, but a lot of fun. But yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, we can move on to pro sumo. Yes. Well, ho hold on before I, I have Ooh. two things. Oh, One do you? personal actual uh, apologies to Joe from the UK and Anne from the Netherlands. When we were in uh, Nagoya together watching the tournament, I somehow wound up with your Bonske. So uh -oh. if <sighs> either of you are watching and or listening, send us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com <laughs> and I will get it to you. Somehow send us some missive. Yes. Yeah, well, just, just some missive. It's like, yeah, whoops, Send sorry. Send your calling got, card. Somehow I stole this. I didn't mean to, but it got put inside my Bonske somehow. So, sorry. If you don't oh, have it. Oh, no. I got an extra Bonske. And, what well, a mistake. <laughs> but I know who the owners are, so I have to give it back. No, that's that's funny. And uh, two, we have been doing a terrible disservice on this show. Who won and who was the proper addressee? Jake. A good point. I didn't win. <gasps> right. I, but you did. I am you the winner. You terrible oh. Suke B. Oh, I forgot. I, I I wasn't really paying attention this Basho. show. Yeah, it wasn't, it's, not, it's not very important. We don't have to talk about it, please. <laughs> so who did you drag out uh, of the state to do sumo twice? This time? Marco Zuna Flarek. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Mac, I, for being on top of it. I am deeply ashamed of myself for oh, crap. not We're bringing be... that up earlier. I'm going to yeah. be traveling with you while you are reigning Yokozuna. <laughs> that's that's going to get, that's get, that weekend's going to get annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to perform the Tsuke Bido duties, Jake. I got to, oh uh, man, I'm, somehow I got to manage the brackets at Roller Town and the stream at Sakura while also mm -hmm. getting Flarek his coffee and his towel and, <laughs> yep, I don't know, driving him around. <laughs> Thank you, Matt for reminding us of the most important function of these recap episodes. <laughs> All right, back to the whatever happened this tournament.
not important. Takeru Fuji no, won no. a Yu show in his Maku Uchi. <laughs> Let's talk more about Flaric winning. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Second consecutive on a run. Hey. But historic, uh, record shattering Yu show from Maku Uchi debutante Takeru Fuji going 13 and 2 from the Maiga Shira 17 rank. Somehow we've been around to see three Maiga Shira 17 U shows. Uh, we'll we'll get more into Takedu Fuji's records in a moment. First, let's just roll out all the other uh, Jude U shows and special prizes. So Jude U show winners, we had three of them this time. We had Hoshoryu, 11 of four record. Maiga Shira 5, Onosato, 11 of four record. And Takayasu, kind of... A uh, backdoor Jun Yusho is what I would call that for Takayasu. Somebody that was never involved <laughs> in the Yusho race, never fought anybody above the rank of Maigashira 5, except for I think he fought Komusubi Abi one day, uh, but was never involved in any of the high stakes matches and then just was able to keep winning and get a backdoor Yusho as Ono Sato <laughs> lost on the final day. Um, so that's the first career Yusho, Jun Yusho for Hoshoryu and Ono Sato and the eighth career June you show for my gosh you're eight Takayasu Jake we got far too many things to talk about uh in this episode to focus too much on Takayasu here but I do want to give you a moment uh to give your thoughts on Takayasu this boss show he's back baby we're out, well, well on our way to Ozeki <laughs> it's a, the first boss show of an Ozeki run he's going straight to Sekiwaki two more uh two more 11s that ought to do it back to Ozeki where he should be Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Bonsuke math all works out there. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> no breaks on the Takayasu train. No. Lots of hair. No breaks. <laughs> Choo -choo. The only the only issue is, does that hair get tangled up in the wheels and maybe send it off course a little bit? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of a way that that metaphor can continue, but they're all gross. Yeah, let's move yeah, on. No, let's move on from that. Gross. The special prizes, and they all went to our two rookie Rikshi, uh, the Gino Show and Kanto Show Technique and Fighting Spirit prizes. One went to each of Takedu Fuji and Ono Sato. Uh, ono Sato picking up his second career fighting spirit and his first career technique. Takedu Fuji obviously picking up his first career of each of those two special prizes. And then Takedu Fuji also took home the Shukun Show Outstanding Performance Prize. Uh, so he picked up all three special prizes in this Basho. Uh, and so... I'm sure he's setting other records with like fastest to win. No, Haku Oho was the fastest to ever get yeah. a special prize and like four Basho. <laughs> oh, right. <Yeah. laughs> Another, uh, we got some more fun facts on special prizes in a minute. Yes. But Takeru Fuji might have the record for somebody who wasn't a Tsukedashi. Oh, sure. He might be the quickest to a special prize. Depends on somebody do real quick research. Did Joe Koryu get a special prize in his Makuchi debut? And if it. he didn't, then Takeru Fuji is the fastest to get a top division special prize uh, from his debut. So, yeah. <clears throat> Takeru Fuji won the U show. Uh, let's just go. Joe, I'm getting the. The head shake from Jake, Joe Koryu did not get a special prize in his Makuchi debut. So, okay. we'll just add that to the list of uh records that i'm about to list that either the, the gretzky-esque list of records that were just set yeah that he either <laughs> tied or sets or just the first time this happened in a very long time so he tied for the most consecutive wins in Imaku uchi debut winning his first 11 the person he tied with yokozuna taiho uh, he tied for the most wins in a Maku Uchi debut with 13. No Maku Uchi debutante has ever gotten 14 or 15 wins. So he tied with a former Sekiwake Ichinojo, another former Sekiwake Matsuorashi, and a former Yokozuna Kita no Fuji. He is the sixth Rikshi to win all three prizes in a Basho. The other five, we had one Komosubi, three Ozeki and one Yokozuna. And he's the first to do it since Koto meets key in 2000. So the first time somebody's wow. taken home all three special prizes in 24 years, as we just mentioned, adding it to the list in real time, the fastest to win a special prize for a Rikshi that debuted in Jono Kuchi and did not receive any Tsuke Dashi status. As we mentioned, that record would belong to Haku Oho. Uh, he tied for the lowest ranked Rikshi to win a Maku Uchi Yu show with Toku Shoryu as the 42nd out of 42 uh, top division Rikshi. 
with Terano Fuji, won his Maegashira at 17, Yusho, he was Maegashira at 17 East, and I believe it was Kodo Yuki was Maegashira at 17 West. Uh, he is the first Rikshi to win a Yusho in his Maku Uchi debut since 1914. That's Steve. 110 years when they fought 10 matches and fought two Bashos a year. <laughs> and sumo was an absolutely, completely different sport. That was Ryo Goku, former Sekiwake. And he is the first to win back-to-back Juryo and Maku Uchi Yusho since... That same Rikshi, Ryo Goku, back in 1914, was the last Rikshi to win back-to-back Jurio and Maku Uchi Yushos. Uh, Takeru Fuji is the only Rikshi ever to win the Jurio Yusho in his Jurio debut and the Maku Uchi Yusho in his Maku Uchi debut. Uh, he is the fastest Rikshi to win a Maku Uchi Yusho from his pro debut in 10 Bashos, the previous <laughs> record for a Rikshi that did not have Tsukedashi status was 24 Bashos. He cut wow. that number in less than half. And that record was held by Yokozuna Takanohana and Yokozuna Asa Shoryu. The previous record for any Rikshi Tsukedashi status or otherwise was 15 Yusho, and that belonged to Yokozuna Wajima, who I believe was a Makushita Tsukedashi yep. Rikshi. Uh, so any way you cut it, this is the fastest anybody has won a Yusho from their pro debut. Uh, and he has also still not lost in his 10 Bashos more than two matches in a single Basho. Yeah, his, uh, (laughs) real quick, his career record is now 69 and 10. Nice. (laughs) Unreal. One, nice. And two, yeah, holy cow, that's incredible. Yeah, I I, I just want to, once again, impress upon people, you are likely never to see anything like this in your lifetime. Uh, Just... No, seriously. <laughs> the the culmination with his rapid ascent to the top division and immediate dominance uh, over the top division. I'm not going to say completely over the top division. He did lose to a couple of guys in the higher ranks, but certainly shows that he is not going to be a Maegashira 10 or below anytime soon. No. Uh, it's just unmatched and... I was making sure to emphasize a lot of the people he was tying records with or breaking records of were Yokozuna. And so it's way too soon, honestly, to make any assertion about what Takeru Fuji's career could be. (laughs) But it could not get off to any better start. This Richie is literally off to the best start in sumo history. And we just saw the culmination of that here. Uh, We are here to witness it. (laughs) Flaric. Uh, I do need to ask mm. you, has Takeru Fuji passed the eye test for you yet? Uh, you <laughs> kind of down on him on the Midway episode. Yeah, it's how many times have we seen someone do very well in the beginning, but then they get those matches up top? And it's just kind of night and day. It's like, no, uh, you're not ready yet. It's not yeah. going to happen, especially yeah. those uh, people who are new to the top division. And I don't know. It was, I think, it was this match against uh, Kota Nawaka is where he actually outpushed yes. that guy. And yeah. now that's that was kind of I was like, wow. And that was kind of the point where I was like, wait a second, this guy is actually the real deal. <laughs> hold on. Wait, hold up. <laughs> He's looking pretty good. He's looking all so beautiful and handsome. Oh my goodness. And it's yeah, I hundred percent he passed the eye test for me. He on I, I was that his first match against the top division against Kota Nowaka? Uh I guess he had Yeah, it was his, well it was a yeah. second match against uh Komo Subi or higher because he'd already yep, beaten Komo. Abi. Yep. Then he yep. faced Ono Sato and beat him mm-hmm. at Mike yeah, Sure five. But yeah, Abi's until... no Abi's no no slouch either. Dude. Yeah, for sure. Up yeah. up through day uh eight, he was facing double digit Maigashira. Um, but then after that, yeah, it was Komosubi, Maigashira five, two Ozekis, a Sekiwake, and um yeah, then Asanoyama and Gonoyama because he had run out of upper division guys to beat. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. if the Gonoyama matchup confuses you, he had already fought everybody he could fight that had like 11 wins, like Hoshoryu, yeah. Ono Sato. And then the next best record would have been somebody with 10 wins. And the highest ranked Rikshi with 10 wins available was Gonoyama. The next would have been Takayasu, but he was my right. year eight. So they matched him up with the highest ranked Rikshi with the most amount of wins available. And I'm thankful for that because I don't <laughs> think that uh, Takayasu this tournament, despite looking better than he has recently, 
Yeah, Takara, Takara Fuji probably would have beaten him, that, and Takayasu would not have gotten his 38th <laughs> Junyu show or something. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's uh, he looked fan like just coming out of the gate against Kota Nawaka. And this is not this is a Kota Nawaka who ended up with 10 wins in the Basho. This is a uh, Ozeki who performed during the time, mm-hmm. so he's not like one of those with like half injured at the time. So it's 100%. It's I am very impressed, and I am just blown away by his performance. What a win. What a basho. Yeah. Uh, Jake, what the hell did we just witness over the past 15 days? In my expert opinion, this is the creator wrestler character in a sumo video game set to very easy mode. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only the only downside here, obviously, was that ankle injury. Um, so, like, I, I, yeah, it, it's, it defies all logic, of course, um, especially because he has probably the skinniest legs in the top division. That makes no sense to me either. <laughs> I, I think he took like half of his leg muscle and moved it to, to his traps or something like that. Cause yeah, his, his neck is just mm-hmm. rock solid. I, no, I, he I don't, all of his, I don't... all of his stats and trap and still. Yeah. Legs. <laughs> <laughs> he used up, yeah. He did a point by version of uh, leveling up and put everything into upper body instead. But but no, clearly, clearly not, though, because he is just outrageously strong. Um, Asano Yama is another guy that, you know, you you kind of think of as like, who's just like the most purely physically strong guy out there. And yeah, even with Takeru Fuji being injured, he's still he's still plowed into Asano Yama and that um, and, and still like. W- was absolutely on the same level, pure strength wise, for sure. Um, I wonder I how was, much of it. I wonder how much of it is just practicing against Terunu Fuji as like a big boy to go against. He yeah. just says like, this is easy, like compared to my normal <laughs> practice partners. Well, I, I did see some comments after the Basho from him pretty much saying like, yeah, I mean, I, I go up against Terunu Fuji in practice. Uh, he's also got like a Tommy Fuji there. He's like, I've got all this other high competition that I'm going up against oh, yeah. all the time. And that, absolutely has to make a huge difference in how quickly he was able to uh, reach his potential in the top division. Yeah. yeah Isagahama is definitely the stable right now. They, mm. they absolutely have secured it here. Yeah. They've been, they've been there for a while. Isn't like the third Yokoz, no, not Yokozuna, obviously, but like third U show. They, they have like two Yokozunas, right? Haramu Fuji and then they Haramu have Fuji, Fuji. Yeah, Fuji. Fuji. Yep. 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 Yeah. I mean, yeah. they've, they've been on and off for sure, but like recently, um, Midori Fuji and Takara Fuji, and I guess Nishiki Fuji have all been kind of like lower Maegashira, and Terano Fuji has clearly on his way out, um, on some level or other. That's obviously up for debate. But until Atami Fuji and Takara Fuji came out of nowhere and absolutely turned everything upside down, it definitely looked like Isegahama was going to kind of like post Terano Fuji fade into just being yet another stable with some ha- with a handful of top division guys, right? But yeah, these two prospects coming out of nowhere, not nowhere, nowhere, but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely immediately made themselves players at the top of the Bonds K. Um, that absolutely has supplanted anybody else's argument for being the top stable for sure. Yeah. And Takada Fuji, who obviously longtime Makauchi um mainstay he got mm-hmm. an eight and seven from jurio one west i haven't done the bonds k math he there's a possibility he could slide over to just jurio one east but likely we're getting takato fuji back in the top division as well so that'll be six isekahama men in the top uh division three of which terano fuji atami fuji and takedu fuji all are gonna be in the joy next basho and won't be able to face each other yeah, yeah. Over the last couple of years, we've had surges from like Sado Gatake Bea. That's the one with uh, all the Kotos, mm-hmm. um, and then Kokonoe Bea is the one that has all of the Chios. Oitekaze uh, with like Tobizaru and Endo a couple of years back had a couple and Daisho and Daisho, couple, yeah, a couple Daisho. guys up in like the Sanyaku and the Joy. Yeah, but but until recently here, uh, yeah, the Isegahama obviously used to be a, a a bigger name than it was, and now they're very much back at number one for sure if they're mm-hmm. if they had ever dipped down that's that is a thing of the past yeah but yeah uh i'm not gonna say luckily we had that little bit of drama with takedu fuji uh and his ankle after his day 14 loss to asa because otherwise 
besides the historic nature of the U show, that is shaping up to be a boring last three days. Going into day 14, Takedo Fuji was two wins up on any other competition. And if he won one of his final two days, he would take home the U show. He lost that match to Asanoyama. And then you saw him limping severely uh, following that match. He had to be uh, wheeled out in a wheelchair and he was taken from the Kokuki Khan by an ambulance to hospital to have his ankle checked out. So there was a lot of online concern of, Oh no, what if Takedo Fuji won? How, how awful that this is happening for Takedo Fuji to be this close to such dramatic history and might have to pull out on the final day. And then the stock, well, this could be the third time ever that we have a Yusho won by a Rikshi that is Kyujo on the final day. Or in another scenario, uh, we could have Takedo Fuji miss day 15. Uh, get a Fusen loss. Ono Sato, if he had beaten Hoshoryu, would have tied Takedo Fuji with the most wins, and then Ono Sato would have won a playoff by default, which would have been the first time that happened in the yeah. top division ever. <laughs> uh, but Takedo Fuji showed up, taped up ankle and all, was still able to take care of business against Gonoyama on day 15 to push aside any possible drama or playoff. He... Uh, Flarek, I think you had a few more details about how he was able to make it to day 15. Yeah, it was, uh, this was a comment, I think, uh, relayed from the sumo forums, but I guess Issei Gahama was on the Japanese broadcast for day 15. And it sounds like oh. after the match that he kind of gave a little more info on it, but it sounds like he, uh, it was badly stretched ligaments, ligaments on his ankle. So like an ankle sprain is what he ended up with, what we kind of assumed and bad enough that he actually couldn't walk on it. But he is uh he couldn't walk on yesterday. Isikahama actually planned to submit the Kyujo forms, but apparently talk uh is says Takeru Fuji, but I'm assuming it's Takeru Fuji. Woke him up at night to say he <laughs> wanted to compete. And so they just load they taped him up, load him up, load him up on painkillers, and he just kinda went went ahead and and got the win against Gonoyama. So it's uh sounded like one of those things where uh uh Unfortunately, like we always say, like people should prioritize their health over competing. But I guess ankle injuries are kind of one of those little iffy zones of where I, I was some... gonna say it's not your head, neck, or That's back. Kind of yeah. what I was thinking too. <laughs> <laughs> you got two of them. Yeah, yeah. I I think this is two. kind of one of those one of those little things you can kind of risk it a little bit, as you can say. I I know as my just last year I actually had like a slight ankle sprain, and I just went ahead and just played a frisbee tournament the entire time. And I was I was fine the entire time. I had no lingering issues at all. So I nice. completely understand, especially when he had so much. You're you're never guaranteed to win another you uh, win the U show. So there's no guarantee he'll be in this uh, situation again. So I completely understand just saying like, hey, I want to compete, and he just was able to pull off. It was fantastic. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. Like that is like the crowning achievement of the best sumo wrestlers of all time. Several of them don't even have a U show, right? Like you could look at, like we just talked about Takiyasu. Takiyasu is probably one of the best wrestlers to not win a U show. Mm -hmm. um, so Ozeki like Kotonowaka still waiting on his U show. I it, feel like there's, I feel like he's still on the up, but like oh, somebody yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying he's the rank of Ozeki still doesn't have a U yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He said, no, so, Sato, he was like 32 before he finally won his right. U show. Right. <laughs> So yeah, it, just to emphasize how big a deal like that is, that's what you're saving up your ankle health to do. Not like you're you don't you're not preserving your ankle to wait for another chance potentially. Like that's I, I get that, mm -hmm. and and yeah, and the other point I was going to bring up, you did as well. It's not it's not the head or the back or or something that could potentially like um. They, ankles just don't seem to be as debilitating of a thing to get hurt, especially in sumo. If it was a knee, you know, maybe that'd be a different mm. issue, but like, yeah, he, and day 15, he looked fine. Yeah. He didn't look he quite as much a destroyer, but he looked fine. Yeah. Like he wasn't able to immediately blast Gonoyama back and out of the dojo. They kind of met and stalled uh, yeah. at the Tachi eye, but then Takedu Fuji did his thing and still forced him back and out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and to be honest, who knows if uh, who knows what that match would have looked like, uh, even if they were both at full health? Because Gonoyama is another very strong blaster. So He's like no that, uh, 
just like Asanoyama, uh, th- those are two matches where I guess I really wouldn't have expected Takeru Fuji to be able to straight blast a guy backwards with no complications, right? Mm. But regardless, went fine for him this time. Just hope that he didn't make it worse or anything. So, Mac, with Takeru Fuji's historic you show behind us, we we always got to take a look what's coming next. Let your positivity absolutely run wild. After one top division Basho, what are your expectations for Takeru Fuji's career? I believe in the night before, Takeru Fuji had a dream. The spirit of Ryogoku came to him in an avatar state like scenario, sumo greats from the past, <laughs> all staring down at him going, you are on the cusp of greatness. Do you want to win or do you want to win? <laughs> and that is what inspired him to go and wake his Oyakata and say, I must compete. We are looking at a future <laughs> phenom. This is the origin story of the next god of sumo. <laughs> does, I love it. Does the avatar status for a sumo wrestler pass on when they retire or when the guy dies? So it would depend on if he's an airbender. <laughs> if he was an airbender, they wouldn't have to go back. He could be an earthbender. I'm not sure. But with his power and strength, I'm not. I, I'm definitely not getting water, tribe, or fire. So we'll have to go back and revisit this. <laughs> what would? Yeah. And what would the four elements be for sumo avatar? I guess it would be like push. There's belt throw push. Bell, push. Anchor. There's the Gino show. Oh, was it Gino oh. show? Mind, body, spirit, or something there like you that. Go. Shin gi tai. Is- yeah. 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 Thank you. Gi tai. <laughs> <laughs> Shin Gi Tai Henka. And then yeah. Tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need an opening now. Okay, new yeah. new plan. We just need an yeah. Avatar esque opening for Sumo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And they they do like special special move intros for like heart, for technique, for physique, and mm-hmm. for Henka. <laughs> <laughs> Long ago, the four rhythms. The, the four, four, yes, the of four elements of sumo. Peak, but that all changed when Takara Fuji made his appearance. He truly is the avatar. <laughs> the fat bender of legend. <laughs> the one who was foretold. Oh, man. I had one more note uh, before we move on to anybody else. Um, there's definitely... This happens occasionally. I've seen a lot of discussion on the technique prize. Um, especially... To put it in perspective here, uh, uh, Takeru Fuji got the technique prize, and he only had one win that wasn't Yorikiri or Oshidashi. A lot of the times... What? One Okuridashi and one Oshitaoshi. Oh, Okuridashi starts with O. It's the same thing. A rear push crush out. (laughs) Different flavors of Oshidashi. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But point being, though, that's not particularly flashy, um, but... The technique prize, you, if you think about it as like who implements their sumo onto the other person the most. Mm. Um, and and one of the ways I, I can't I, I apologize, I can't remember where I heard this the first time, but the technique prize, you can think of it is often given to the person with the best technique, not the most technique. If it was given to somebody who had the highest quantity of overall technical stuff going on. It'd just be Ura every time, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> but Takeru Fuji, even if what he did wasn't flashy, it was still incredibly technical to keep people in front of him in a way that he can use his power to go straight forward. And you know how much the JSE, JSA East loves their guys who go straight forward. So yeah, that that was kind of the idea. And same for, same for Ono Sato, like him yeah. being in the discussion for technique, same deal able to implement his sumo onto the other person. And effectively, I think other than maybe like one to three seconds total, this Basho, those two were implementing their will and the other person was reacting. Yeah. Even in like the, both of their losses to Hoshoryu, both of them are moving Hoshoryu back, but Hoshoryu is a very skilled technician and knows how to take advantage of, take advantage of their momentum, use it against them and throw them down. Um, Sly Fox. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, I will. Quick correction, Jake. It's not the JSA who determines who wins the special prizes. It's like a group of media people that all determine that. On oh, really? Own. It's not yeah. like yeah. officially With part also of the... With also Oikata as well. I know that. Oh, okay. It's like, like a... Wait a minute. It's yeah. like an outside committee, not uh, not yeah. associated with the JSA that assigns the special prizes. Didn't know that. Um, cool. 
And then, yeah, so Takeru Fuji, I did find he actually did also have an Uwatanage in there. So he won by five Kimarite. Ono Sato, he, he did even less. Uh, he won by three, the Yodakiri, the Oshidashi, <laughs> and then two Hitaki Komi. Well, four. He had one Fusen. Yeah. Uh, that I have, yeah. Exactly. I have one more shout out before we move on. It's just uh, actually to Hiro Morita. Uh, I caught a little bit of the English broadcast play-by-play mm. on kintami yama's channel and he was bringing it after take refugee guys when i i can feel the gravitas i can feel the energy shout out to that guy he uh he loves his sumo i'm gonna echo that with you Flaric. i love listening to the english commentary after watch it and yeah he just come i love his energy with that i i'm trying to channel his energy when mm. i do some of this stuff <laughs> <laughs> You need to get beat up by by trying to do sumo more to really <laughs> complete that. <laughs> yeah, I need to show up to practice, Mac. Uh, <laughs> sure. Let's talk about that. Mm. All right. Ed, Bri- sorry. On that note, yeah. brief brief what? props what? to Ryan for showing up to to Iowa sumo practice for the first time in a while. Good to have you back and go undefeated <laughs> against you again. I, I I was wearing jeans and a t shirt, Jay. Yeah, I did not. I didn't have a belt to, to grab onto. I don't know how that's an advantage for for me here. It also hurt like my muscles in my upper back, and I'm actually kind of dealing with that right now. It sucks. Uh, yeah, I know. Sumo's hard. I told you, May. Sumo's Jake. hard. May. <laughs> um, but Takeru Fuji, he made the most waves this Basho, but he's not the only rookie making waves in big ways because we also somehow getting overshadowed is Ono Sato, which any other time that this is his second Basho, he's like the top story of rookie yeah. sensation. No kidding. Um, but Ono Sato, he now won a June U show capping off his first full year in sumo wrestling. He took out four <laughs> Rikshi in the Sanyaku ranks to do so, including an Ozeki and Taka Keisho, uh, depending on as impressive as you want to make that with Takakesho's current injury status. Um, he is the fourth ever Rikshi to have at least 11 wins in his first two top division Bashos, joining Yokozuna, Teru Kuni, Komosubi, Wakano Umi, and Yokozuna Hakuho. So, Ono Sato also... It's hard to make patterns out of one or two Bashos, but the things these guys are doing are things that top Rikshi do. Yeah. Obviously, some of the thing, some of the records that I mentioned with Takeru Fuji, like there was like a Sekiwake or something in there. So it's not a guarantee of anything by any means necessary. But it seems like at minimum for these two Rikshi, Sanyaku ranks within their future, which cannot say would be a shock to anybody and actually ono sato i think has a very good shot at komosubi next basho uh mm. taking a brief look at the bonds k math i haven't done a full analysis uh it's just a real quick look so i could be off but yeah, no, could no, be... no be giving away anything yet ryan come on could be looking at komosubi ono sato in his third basho <laughs> Oof, wow <laughs> another so... meteoric rise <laughs> yeah uh, so, Flarek, I'm going to give you the opportunity. Let your positivity run wild this time. What are you <laughs> What are you expecting from Ono Sato? Uh, I guess he's going to get possessed by another spirit, and <laughs> but this time, hair spirit is going to be. I don't know. I can't. I I'm trying to think of something along the lines of Mac, but I just am not nearly. Take as some of my energy. Take some yeah. of my energy. <laughs> uh, no, I think you're 100. percent uh, what you said, definitely Sanyaku is he. He definitely looked good, and I I saw exactly why I wanted to see this Basho. Like still doing very very well, and then more matches against the top Sanyaku, but doing a little bit better, like a little bit improvement. Mm. He uh, <laughs> he still got he still got thrown by Hoshoryu, but I don't know. Hoshoryu is everyone... like that's not a bad. It thing. happens to a lot oh. of people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> except There's... for Ura Tobizaru Midori Fuji, who Hoshoryu just can't beat. <laughs> they're too wily but yeah, yeah it's uh but yeah it's uh he, he looked pretty fantastic i i can't i won't lie like definitely takari fuji stole my heart and my most of my positivity this basho but onosato like he was there right up until the end he uh honestly him being one went off forced the takari fuji to show up on day 15 so he was definitely a very good rivalry for uh between the two and I also, I hope that kind of continues. That would be kind of fantastic to see. But yeah, yeah, what a fantastic Basho. Slow incremental improvement. It's good to see. Uh, hopefully we see more. 
yeah, relatively and when you're slow, slow. When your yeah. slow incremental improvement starts with a baseline of 11 wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not bad. No kidding. All right, let's 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 talk about our Ozeki, uh, this Basho, Hoshoryu doing the best of them as he was one of the three Rikshi to walk away with a June Yu show. Uh, surprise anybody else that this is Hoshoryu's first June Yu show? Yep. Yeah, actually. I had yeah. to double check a <laughs> couple was. sources to be certain. Yeah, <laughs> That didn't yeah, sound I mean, right at all. Hoshoryu's only gotten 12 wins in his career once, and that was when he won the U show. So his highest point before that has been 11 wins, and 11 wins isn't going to get you the June U show all the time. I mean, we've seen plenty of it recently, but uh, so yeah, Hoshoryu, he, he, this was the guy that was the wall for these two rookies. He's the only guy that can claim, hey, I took out Takedu Fuji and Ono Sato in this Ba show. So uh, Hoshoryu knows what to do to handle these big guys running at him. He knows how to, all right, you're, <laughs> you're going really fast at me. I'm just going to take that momentum, use it against you, toss you down. Uh, he just, like I said, he can't, he can't beat those little wily guys because if he had I, taken... I double checked you on that one. Midori Fuji has him seven to six, but then he has winning records against Ura and Toby Zaro. So I don't know well, what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, this, ba- <laughs> I'm specifically this, this Basho. Basho. He lost okay, to fair. those three guys is more what I'm meaning. So like, and with, who of those ended up with a winning record? Ura, no. Midori Fuji, no. Tobizaru, eight and seven. Barely. Barely, yeah. Uh, so, like, if he could have just taken business, taken care of business against those guys, oh, sure, you could have ended up uh, challenging for the U show. But he didn't, and he got the June U show. Yeah, he's... um. I, I think it's it's impressive how, like, these guys are all the same age. They're all 24. Mm-hmm. Um, ono Sato, Hoshoryu, uh, Takeru Fuji. And yet Hoshoryu is like seems so much more established. I mean, obviously, because well, yeah. he's been there longer. Yeah, he's been there. He, he, he didn't he didn't go the university route, so he's been in sumo pro sumo much longer, even though that all three of them have like roughly the same amount of overall sumo experience, I guess. Uh, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, Hoshoryu being the uh I, I guess I, I would have hoped that Takakesho and Terano Fuji were healthier, but yeah, Hoshoryu being there to be the uh, the gatekeeper, I think was was very cool and shows that all three of those guys being 24, toss Kotonowaka in there. Oh, he's 26, but still, like he's still plenty young. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, the Ozeki as a as a whole group, the Ozekis didn't super impress, but like Hoshoryu and to a lesser extent, Coach Nowaka being the gatekeepers was pretty cool. And that's something that I kind of wanted to point out with his match, particularly with Hoshoryu against Kota Nowaka. It was a great match. It was a great battle. And what I really liked to see with Kota Nowaka was he used one of Hoshoryu's tricks against him, the trip, just to get him off balance. So Hoshoryu started off that match with a hit and shift, the Harama Fuji special, the hit and shift to try and get to the side. <laughs> but Kota Nowaka got a grip on his Mawashi and then it just became a belt battle. And then Kota Nowaka tripped him. It was like, wait a minute. That's, that's we don't awesome normally match. see that from him. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that got Hoshoryu off balance. And Hoshoryu went down toward Yoritao Oshii. And Hoshoryu was visibly upset with that. Mm-hmm. But that, I, that, like that cost saying, him a chance at the U show. Well, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but I love, like you were saying, the gatekeepers in this case. Kota Nowaka and Hoshoryu definitely representing that. I, I want more matches like this where it's just a back and forth battle of tricks and belt techniques. And it's like this... This is what you want, and I hope we continue to see that develop in the upper ranks. Um, before we move on to our next Ozeki, we did bring up Toby Zaru. I'd be remiss to mention if he that he also had to miss one day uh, due to diarrhea. Uh, <laughs> same as his brother Hidenumi. Yeah. <laughs> same as his brother Hidenumi had to do down in Jurio. So must have had a bad family function that. <laughs> <laughs> something they ate <laughs> man something wasn't right i feel i'm kind of annoyed at that oyakata just tell him it's a sprain or something come on don't don't give send in dignity. a doctor's note for the poops like come on man G- give me a break and just say that i'm hurt please <laughs> he's <was> done dirty <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all right uh, to our next Ozeki, Taka Keisho, he got his eight wins. I would say an impressive... <laughs> and then I said, I'm out. 
<laughs> well, I think that was a bit more legitimate. His uh, his cue, Joe. <laughs> than you might be suspecting. The computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no uh, classic. Are uh, you uh, doing Taka their games <laughs> for sure though? <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, so Taka Keisho, <laughs> I would say very <laughs> impressively defeating Koto Nawaka on day thirteen. That was not something I saw coming with how T- Taka Keisho had lost his three prior matches going up against Koto Nawaka, especially after Koto Nawaka immediately gets a grip on Taka Keisho's belt. And Taka Keisho somehow able to fight through that and get uh, Koto Nawaka out of the ring. But he was using like his right arm wrapped around Koto mm-hmm. Nawaka, uh, trying to move him around with that. And mm-hmm. that was too much for the little T-Rex arms for Taka Keisho as he had to pull out on day 14. Uh, do, I believe it was like a chest injury on on that right side yeah like a pectoral tear it's i think i i forget where i saw it, it might have been in the commentary about like like takakesha's footwork i think takakesha's footwork might be a sneakily kind of thing he's really good at is just mm-hmm. kind of be able to get his feet where they need to be to mm-hmm. be just be able to get the results the leverage the push that he needs and i think it was definitely very apparent in that match because like you said like he got his belt but somehow he was still able to get a win and it's just like, how does this happen? But it's just yeah. like, yeah, he's got some sneaky little feet, Takakisha. Yeah, that's why yeah, I was it's... checking the Kimarite on that Akuri Dashi. Like that doesn't yeah. happen. <laughs> it's it's a bummer that that's how it got officially logged because, like, yeah, the final push was Takakisha pushing Kota Nawaka's back to get him mm-hmm. out, right? But, but it was like, he should get credit like throw. Yeah, yeah, he should get some sort of like half mm-hmm. credit for doing a right. belt battle and beating a guy who's really good at that. It's like we were talking before we started this podcast. Uh, Kimarite or bullshit? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, before we were recording, we were talking about how uh, Ura almost broke the Ashitori drought yeah. uh, that mm-hmm. has been several years without uh, Teretsuyoshi. But he lifted Nishikiki's leg and carried him all the way to the edge and then just and pushed then him out, <laughs> like on the chest. So it doesn't count as a leg pick. Yeah. Uh. Grand Grand Sumo Breakdown is officially on Ashitori Watch. Top division only. Yes. Don't care yes. about lower Top division only. We are officially on Ashitori Watch from here on out. We will not rest until we get one. <laughs> I would really like to rest at least a couple a couple nights before the next Basho. Well, you, we you've next got two. You've got two full two full months of rest. Okay. All right. <laughs> Once the Basho starts, though, no resting. It's no only resting. An Ashitori. None. Yeah. None. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hidishima, it, it wasn't a one week fluke. He could not really get it together at all. I, I'm honestly shocked. A five and ten record for Kidishima. Like there has to be has to be an injury involved in there. there I, I can't see any other explanation for that. He did wrap it up with a fantastic match against Kota Nowaka yeah, on nowhere. day 15. Um and he had that he got a Kyujo win against Takakesho on day 14. And I believe did did we get all Ozeki facing each other for the most part? Did Hoshoryu fight Kirishima as well? Nope. No. No. Okay. Darn it. Yeah, we missed a couple. Ha- had to get room in there for Onosato and Takedu Fuji to yep. fight those guys. But yeah, just very disappointing Basho for Kirishima here. And one all of right. those wins was a Fusin. Yeah, the one against Takakesho. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I have a conspiracy theory uh, with Kirishima. Oh, let maybe, it rip. Ooh. <laughs> maybe he was at that same family function as Tobizaro <laughs> Hidenomi, but his Oyakata, you know, has his back and didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> he was fine with the don't. poops the entire time. <laughs> he's clenching the entire time he's in the ring. All right, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I can see the fear of that. Uh, and desecrating the holy dojo, really impacting your sumo. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Priority. Priority number two. Win the match. Priority number one. We know what priority number it. one is. <laughs> Don't Keep do it. it. In. <laughs> um, and I think we do have. Uh, a note on Kirishima, but we do have official uh, that he will be transferring to Otowayama Bay. Uh, mm. um, his previous Oyakata Michinoku, who reached the mandatory retirement age, is going to be rehired as a consultant for the JSA and will be moving to the Otowayama Bay uh, alongside Kirishima. And I think the other Michinoku Rikshi are going to be split between two other Heya. Um, I don't remember what they are at this time. Uh, you can find it online somewhere. 
Yeah, that is uh, not a very uh, not a very big stable. No, <laughs> no. They there's have like uh, what, four guys now. There's one guy in the bottom of San Uh There's one guy in Jonokuchi. There's uh, one, two, three guys in Maizumo. And then, nope, they're just listed twice here. So yeah, it looks like there's five other guys there, none of them above uh, San Danmei. Yeah, I will. I will say that's uh, actually pretty normal for someone branching off. I think normally, I think uh, some branching off on their own stable, they take maybe a, an experienced person to kind of help coach. But after that, it's usually maybe a, a couple youngsters or something like that. The idea well, is, yeah, like, but it, it's... a new Oikata will be like this. I'm gonna bring these people up to kind of like show my brand of Simo and stuff like that. It's Rather just an interesting choice to developed. send an Ozeki there, I guess. Is it what definitely hundred percent. I, I think that's the only reason why he, he can get away with that is because the, the, the had disbanded. Oh, and why, I guess the, the other note, just in case, uh, I, I mean, I needed a refresher. I had to look it up cause I couldn't remember, uh, Oto Wayama, That is former Yokozuna Kakuryu. Yep. Yes. Ah, yeah. Who had been a coach at the Michinoku Bay uh, alongside Kirishima during right. his whole Ozeki run and all that. Uh, I did find it. Uh, the other Rikshi are going to be split between Issei no Umi Beya. I'm not sure of any high profile people there. Um, and Adashiyo Beya. And that's the Waka Takakage, Waka Motoharu uh, Beya. Gotcha. All right. Uh, and then Koto no Waka. We've brought him up plenty. Perfectly respectful 10 and 5 in your Ozeki debut. I'm never going to gripe about an Ozeki getting. 10 wins. So, no. Good job, Koto Nawaka. Ozeki debut. You did better than Hoshor. You did. You avoided the the curse of the Sheen Ozeki for the most part. So, yeah. Bravo. <laughs> yeah. What honestly, you you get props for that. 10 wins yeah. is definitely really, really good. 10 wins good is hard. Never going to. Gonna, yeah. yeah. I, I, I need to do a better job of like Ozeki are not Yokozuna. You cannot have the same expectations of an Ozeki sure. that you would have of a Yokozuna, like Hoshoryu you lost to Midori Fuji, Tobizaru, Ura. It's like, well, he's, he's just an Ozeki. He's not a Yokozuna yet. He's not supposed to beat everybody yet. So yeah, get 10 good wins job. at Ozeki. Yeah. yeah, good job. No reason to complain. Would they like to be comp- competing for Yusho Junior Show? Absolutely. But just like every single other wrestler in the entire organization, Bingo. of course. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, perfectly respectable. Uh, some other quick hits. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of other notable things that happen. There's there's a <laughs> one big thing, uh, but then everything else is just kind of ho hum. Uh, so Daisho, who had been a solid anchor at the Sekiwake rank for an entire year, will be dropping from the Sanyaku ranks following a six and nine record. He will be replaced by Abi at Sekiwake, who went nine and six. Asanoyama will finally be rejoining the Sanyaku ranks for the first time in nearly three years. Uh, he went nine and six from Maegashira one. We're gonna have those two. We're gonna have two open Komosubi ranks with Abi going up and Nishikigi. I assume they're not keeping Nishikigi at Komosubi following three and twelve record. Probably not. Uh, and then, as Old. I mentioned, that spot vacated by Nishikigi. I real good shot that that's Onosato territory. I. I don't think Takedu Fuji, despite winning the U show, they're not going to vault him all the way up to Komosubi. Uh, there's still Bonsuke math that has to go into it. I don't know where he will land within the joy. I don't know if they're going to try to shoot him all the way up to Maegashira 1. I don't know if they can mathematically shoot him up to Maegashira 1 without screwing other people in the way. Um, yeah. So somewhere between Maegashira 1 and 3 is my initial guess for Takedu Fuji. And yeah, no, the- no. It is not the start of an Ozeki run. Nobody even <laughs> bring that up. Not not you three, but anybody within earshot, this will not be counted as part of an Ozeki run for Takedu okay. Fuji. I was going to say, wait, what? Wait, what you, won the yeah. you won the U show. You won the U show, right? I, I do kind of, just for like the sake of, uh, ju- just for the sake of like setting, like figuring out where the line is, It'd be really cool if he won the next two to see what happens, right? Okay, yeah. that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if he wins the next U show, he's not going to be promoted to Yokozuna either. <laughs> no, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Crap. What was I going to say after that? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Come back to me. Okay. Uh, the only <laughs> other note that I had, something of significance, I feel like Endo going five and ten for Maegashira sixteen. He will be going down to Jurio for the first time in eight years. Um, I I was reading a Google translated article 
uh, from like some comments somebody made about Takedo Fuji after he won the U show. And then as I kept scrolling down, I saw headlines for other articles and one was like Endo no plans to retire wants to compete in Jurio and make it back to the top division. So I think we could shut down any endo retirement talks. It sounds like based on a Google translated article <laughs> headline that I read <laughs> Endo plans to stick around. All right. Uh, anybody else, anybody wants to bring up at this point in time, or are we good to move on? Um, former Ozeki's Shodai and Matakiyumi both squeaked out winning records. Mm-hmm. Pretty disappointing based on their rank that they only managed eight and nine wins respectively. Yep. Um, yeah, kind of kind of puts uh, one more nail in the coffins of them being top top guys, which kind of a bummer to me. Yeah. Anybody else? Know. You're right. Mac you're right. We, yeah, we had major <laughs> a lot of six and, and nines, yeah, a lot no. of nines and sixes. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have another fun fact that Ma- about Taki Fuji that Mac would enjoy. Ooh, That's yes, about please. it. Uh, apparently, his birthplace is uh, Aomori. Oh, he's uh, from Aomori? Aomori? Sweet. Yeah. yeah, which is the place that Mac uh, visited during his last latest trip to Japan, and he thoroughly enjoyed. It's I... kind of like very northern Japan, but yep. not Hokkaido, but the main island is kind of way north. It is one of the last port cities that you can take to go to Hokkaido on the northern tip. It, yes, I absolutely loved Aomori, and I want to go back so bad. It looks mm-hmm. like Mac has a new favorite rickshi. Yeah, I do. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I need to see more. I need we'll to see to more, see. really. I have, <laughs> I'm not yet dream convinced. of yours. I need to make sure you're the real deal, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not yet believing in this <laughs> sumo avatar just yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that being said, let's talk about our lower division U show winners. In Jurio, we had Mitoryu winning his second career Jurio, Jurio U show <laughs> until proven otherwise. Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, rule juror, juror. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Until proven otherwise, he's still a uh, top division gatekeeper, Rikshi. Um, we in Makushta, we had Kaze Kano winning his first Makushta U show, his second lower division U show, and he's just wrapping up his second year in sumo and should be joining Jurio next. Basho, um, Chiyomaru was the top ranked guy in Makushta and went four and three, so he should be back in Jurio. My boy! Back. Let's go. <laughs> um, in Sandanme, Nagamura, he won his first career Sandanme Yusho. He's 19 years old. Uh, he ended the 20 match win streak of who was it? Uh, da, 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 go down to Sandanme. Awanishiki. Uh, so he had won his first 20 consecutive matches. And then. Oh. Lost he was on one day. away from the triple club there. Yeah, cool. then he lost to Nagamura uh, in his final Sandanme match. So Nagamura, 19 years old, he'll be up to Makushta for the second time in his career. Down in Joni Don, we had Tochi Maru, 31 years old, first Joni Don Yusho, second career lower division Yusho. He's a former Jurio Rikshi in his first Basho back after an extended injury break. And then down in Jonokuchi, we had Chio Oga. Uh, he's 24 years old. This is his first career Yusho. He's a former Makushta Rikshi in his first Basho back after an extended injury break. Uh, and then down in Jurio, some disappointing performances from a couple of Rikshi that I said I would be shocked if one of these guys didn't walk away with the Jurio Yu show. That's Wakataka Kage and let's, Haku let's see the shocked Oho. face. All right. Yeah, there you go. Good yeah. shocked face. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Wakataka Kage started seven and zero oh and then finished two and six in the second week of Jurio. And Haku Oho finishing with just an eight and seven record. Uh, so very, very surprising outcome for those two here. Obviously, both of those guys still making their way back from injury. Maybe they're not all the way back from their injury at this point yet. I'll, obviously, w- surrounding Haku Oho, there's other drama uh, surrounding that. Um, in other news, Terutsu Yoshi kind of fittingly retired after we had just brought him up out of the blue on our midway episode uh but like the f- day after that came out tanitsu yoshi has retired citing a worsening of his diabetes mm. one more quick note on jurio uh hoku seho went 0 and 0 and 15 from jurio 3 
Uh, I don't think he'll be sticking around in Jurio for another Basho. No, he, he, he'll definitely be Mark my be words, out. he will not be on the Jurio Bonds K next Basho. <laughs> <laughs> for, <laughs> for context, he is listed on the Bonds K because his dismissal came after the Bonds K had been written. Mm-hmm. So it, he was just already written on there, even though he was obviously not going to wrestle. It uh, means nothing to, at this point. <laughs> right, exactly. He will just fully disappear for the next Bonds K. Yep. Uh, and then I don't remember if this news was out by the midway episode, but we had said Miyagino stable likely to be absorbed by Asakayama stable. That's the former Kayo. Uh, but I was just scrolling Twitter while we were doing this episode and the latest, another twist in this whole Miyagino Bea's future. Apparently the leading theory right now is that the whole Heya is going to move to Isekahama Bea. <laughs> what? Uh, which would mean Haku Oho in the same stable as Teru no Fuji, Takeru Fuji, Atami Fuji, which kind of actually disappointing. Would like to see those guys oh, face yeah. off. Yeah, I want to see those guys face each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not final yet. The board meeting will be on the 28th uh, for the JSA to finally make a decision. It sounds like this is per sumo follower on Twitter, and they are as trustworthy a source on Twitter as I know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds like. Everybody in the Heya and the coaches, the current plan now is to head to Isekahama, which kind of a little bit of a head scratcher as Isekahama had his own bullying scandal that he got demoted for recently. Yeah. So, yeah, boy. Uh, is not that ideal, really, but is yeah. And I mean, even if Isekahama is still like one of like we mentioned, like the top stable right now. Do they really need more prospects? Do they really need more people living within that same building? (laughs) And yeah, just the optics of the one bullying scandal guy absorbing a another another bullying bullying scandal scandal guy. Yeah. What? (laughs) Come on. That's unless I don't know. I don't like that one at all. Well, unless they're trying to say, okay, now here's our week. This is our focus group. These are all the bad eggs or bad things that we're going to try and figure out here. So we're going to (laughs) come down on them. They're going to see that we are hard. We are tough. We are punishing. And oh, my God. what? Oh, no, we, we did do? it again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And this this is it final. It, this is just maybe just like uh, it sounds like the Isekahama Ichiman has been having meetings throughout the Basho. This is the latest thing that they're most happy with. Maybe it'll change before they go in front of the JSA to get something approved. But this is just the, the latest thing. So mm. who knows where this will finally end up in four days on the 28th. Uh, But with that being said, let's take a quick break and we will come back to figure out where did the two GSB belts end up? If you enjoy the Grand Sumo Breakdown podcast, you can leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search for Grand Sumo Breakdown. Support the show on Patreon and check out our blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. Also, watch us on YouTube. Do we want to do the fairly simple winner's belt first or the more fun loser's belt first? Uh, Always do... Fun last. Fun, fun last. Fun last. Okay, let's get through the the absolute slog, the the work that is the regular GSB belt. Yep. This is our third iteration of the GSB winners belt. Um, we talked about it more on the preview in the midway a little bit, so I won't go over all the rules. But it started off on Dewa Taikai on the very first match of the very first day of this basho, and by the end of it, it ended up on Jota Kuchi Three West Chioga, who Ryan already mentioned won that U show. He will carry that belt up into the mid Joni Don uh, next Basho, and we'll see where he goes from there. But that's pretty much lower divisions. That's pretty much a lock. You can kind of tell where people are going to go, and he's going to go into mid Joni Don. Um, Let's see. No names on there that I recognize yet. We'll see as it as it goes higher. You usually cross paths with at least somebody that you've heard of, like somebody on their way back from an injury or something. So Mm -hmm. we'll see where that goes. Consequently, on that same first day of the tournament, the very last match was uh, uh, Terano Fuji versus Nishikigi. And what we were going to do was say, all right, whoever loses is going to have the belt. And then whoever they lose to is going to have the belt. And whoever they lose to... Um, so, like, the the loser's belt will fall down the ranks as, you know, people lose to people higher ranks than them. Mm-hmm. Did not work out that way. 
Kirishima <laughs> absolutely screwed it. Um, at the midway, it was on Hirodomi, which was awesome. Hirodomi, Magishira 4. We've already gone down like to the bottom of the joy. Now, if oh, what if if he loses to Tamawashi, and I just did the math, if he lost to Tamawashi on that day, uh, on day nine, um, that would have uh or excuse me, if Tamawashi lost. Yeah, so if here, oh my god, yeah, this this is the kind of knots that it always ties me up in. Um, but if Tamawashi had lost, if Hirodomi beat him, then Tamawashi would have carried the belt and it would have ended the tournament on Magashira 13 Ryuden, which would oh, have been wow. awesome. Exactly what I was hoping for was like, watch that. Oh, bang, 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 bang. Now it's super low. What's up, funny, funny note, Jake. I, I just did the same thing for what if Nishiki had lost to Teoro no Fuji oh, on the sure. first day, like we expected. Ooh. Also would have ended up on Ryuden. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ryuden is the arch loser of this Basho, even at yeah. six and nine. <laughs> because uh uh Nishkigi's next win wasn't until uh day 13 against Mese. And then Mese <laughs> on day 14 beat Ichi Yamamoto, which would have given the belt to uh, Ichi Yamamoto, and then Ichi Yamamoto beat Ryuden on day 15. There you go. Mm. <laughs> As it stands, Hirodomi, uh lost to Tamawashi, which minor bummer there, and then far worse bummer, Hirodomi beat Kirishima, who then continued to lose for a few days until we get to day 14 where there's a tiny complication. Uh, so Kirishima at Ozeki East 1 uh, managed to carry the belt until day 14, but then Takakesho pulled out. So that Fusen, I think what we've decided here is that for a Fusen loss, we're just going to say it's like a draw and the belt stays where it's at. Yeah. Mm. Um, if if uh, Fusens count, then Takakesha would have just taken the belt and we would have had nothing to do with it on the final day, you know? Yep. And I'd, I'd rather there be something to do with the belt every day. So let's mm -hmm. just have it count as draws, right? Mm -hmm. What that means is Kirishima maintained the belt until day 15, when he decided to show up as himself for the first time in the entire dang basho and beat Kotonowaka. So the the loser's belt is on Kotonowaka, Ozeki 2 West. It went down a full five people total. Uh and came overall, right I guess, back one to rank. only move one slot. <laughs> no, that's that's what I mean. It went down through the three Ozeki onto the the lowest, technically lowest ranked Ozeki. Uh, but because he did so well, he's going to be moving up. I think so. Yeah, Ryan, will he be the second highest ranked Ozeki in the next Basho? Uh, Kotonowaka? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the belt. <laughs> yeah. This one might be weird. <laughs> <laughs> but what fun. <laughs> but what fun. Exactly. So we'll see where it goes from there. But that one. Yes, my my brain hurts from that one a little bit, but we'll see what happens to it next Basho. All right. That means it's time to. Get to our champ chump results. Flarick, how did you do it? How could you possibly have pulled out your second win in a row? I am not really sure myself, but <laughs> obviously the Only phenom that ta the, uh, Takeru Fuji uh, picking him uh, is was the way to go. What's up with that, guys? Even <laughs> I even tried to help you guys out by uh, picking Oho. Who got Kimboshi before? <laughs> uh, to which really hurt me, but no, no, it's uh, yeah, you guys suck. Get good scrubs. <laughs> um, we did have some conversation in our Discord, uh, talking about wow, Takedu Fuji just put up in our patron league that one person had chosen Takedu Fuji and he put up like either twenty two or twenty four points all by himself because he got thirteen wins. He got uh four. Um, bonus points for beating other champs. So that puts him at 17 points. He got three points, one for each of his special prizes. That puts him at 20, and then two more points for Yusho. So that's 22 points individually for Takedu Fuji. In our GSB league, he got 18 points. And people were asking, well, what's the most wins so, or most points a single champ has gotten us? And so I've gone back. Uh, it looks like we made the transition from five points for a U show to two points for we like debuffed all of yeah, the champ scoring because right. we didn't want whoever chose. It, it basically no just meant the U show winner was all that counted. Yeah, right. we did it, and it was at a time where Tanner No Fuji was dominating for about two years. We didn't just went, oh, you you pick Tanner No, you you have the you're first gonna pick, win. you got you take Tanner No Fuji, you win. So we debuffed it, 
And so that happened between uh, Aki of 2021 and November of 2021. So the, it had to be Aki. It had to be Aki. The, the first <laughs> and se- between the first and second Bashos of Tero Fuji's Yokozuna reign. And so the highest scoring champ we've ever had was actually in the, with the new scoring system was actually the first Basho that we had that new scoring system. Cause Tara no Fuji selected by Flarek had a 15 and <laughs> no record three bonus points for wins over all of our other, all the other champs, champs. Wow. and then two points for the U show. So 20 points has been our highest uh, scoring uh, champ in a single Dang. which is almost perfect the only yes. way that you could improve on that is if a migashira did that and, and then got, got special special prizes, special prizes. Special prizes. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. the yeah. maximum is is yeah. 23 points then yes which there is Takedo fuji fell uh five short of yeah there's there's a little bit wiggle room in there if uh your champ like falls out and then someone else comes in and they face another person's champ again True. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think we've had true. that happen, have we? No, nope, no. that hasn't happened yet. No, that Gotta has happened somebody. once. That Wait, has, has happened once, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody's gotten like four bonus points from it, but somebody has gotten like a little sneaky extra one. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> but that gets kind of into weird like territory and such, so that's <laughs> hard to. Territory. That's hard to. Yeah. That's so, hard to math out. Yeah, Takedo Fuji, for our system, he's actually tied for the third highest point total with 18. That's happened several times, but then we also had a 19-pointer, which I think was Flarek, the next Basho. <laughs> Let me tell you well, again. Just uh, get good scripts. No. <laughs> yeah, I need to watch Flarek, Star Trek. No. Okay. in the next Basho, Mitake Yumi, his third U show, because he got 13 wins, three points, uh, for beating the other champs, two points for the U show, and then one special prize point. So he got nineteen. Wow. Yeah, Damn it, Blair, how ignore... do you do this? <laughs> we're just gonna look at those three Bosch- Boshes where I did well. We're just not gonna look at anything else. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. Sometimes you get the good RNG. I'll take it. All right, uh, Jake, hey, uh, suck real, up to real quick, a little bit. Real quick, before I do uh, compliment Yokozuna Flaric a little bit more. Uh, the winner of our Patreon league. Um, do we want to talk about that at all? Oh, yes. Thank yeah, you for yeah. reminding our me. Ozeki. So Anna, uh, that would be Anna Fants and Chewy Ken uh, tied for the win. Um, and <laughs> with the way that we score this, if Chewy Ken didn't even pick a chump, just like took a fat zero, uh, would have come in ninth. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Ninth out of 25 <laughs> still with zero chump points. But by picking Diamami, a pretty solid chump pick, managed to tie Anna Fance, who got uh, Kota no Waka champ and Nishkigi chump. So, yeah, both very solid picks for those guys. Um, so congrats on being the winners. Uh, I wonder, let's see, Flarek, if you didn't even pick a chump, would you have beaten me? You would have beaten me by six points still if uh, you didn't even have a chump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we will... Game. We will read the um, winning statements from Chewy Ken and Anna Fance if they want to provide those to us on the preview for the Natsu Basho and our patron loser, Q Breezy. If you would like to provide us with our compliments that we deserve, <laughs> we will also read those on the Natsu preview episode. But also, if you hey, don't want to, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. Real, real quick, uh, which which wrestlers did Q Breezy end the tournament with? Uh, Kirishima and Hira do Umi. Ooh. Wow, what a coincidence that the two <laughs> losers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I apologize if any of that is due to listening to me on the podcast, Q Breezy. I will take some responsibility there. Yep. <laughs> Alternatively, I can blame you for steer. No, I don't know. I'll figure out a way that it's not my fault that I lost. <laughs> Bring it back to Q Breezy somehow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jake, we haven't groveled enough to Flarek. Yeah, Mac has raised the bar. <laughs> hey, all so, those things that we said about uh, uh, Takeru Fuji, your champ, uh, also apply to you, Yokozuna Flarek. Oh, yes! <laughs> I am also a phenom who uh, broke a million records by... Yep. Your hair is also too be... short for a Chonmage, just like oh. Takeru Fuji. Takeru Fuji! Well, You're right. He... He has a chon bage. It's, it's the oicho bage that he doesn't have. He doesn't have like the ginkgo Don't leaf. Correct ginkgo me leaf. when I'm groveling. <laughs> 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 All 
I'm a Tsuke Bito. I'm allowed to get things wrong. I've gotten fair. plenty wrong this Basho already. Fair, <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> All oh, right, man. and I do believe we have a punishment from Mac to Indeed you play. do. Yes. So, so I, uh, I was I was gonna say we have a we have a couple things going on because I have to I have to like I think pick some punishments for two things. So I guess how do you want to do this? Do you want to get the Mac punishment going? Because I don't uh, think we yeah, revealed no, which pick, scene pick, we did no. yet. Let's pick Jake's punishment for this time. Then we'll reveal what movie scene Mac is doing and play that. Okay. Yeah, because uh, this was Yokozuna's choice for the Haru Basho. So Flair gets to pick a specific punishment for me to do, mm -hmm. which Our... I feel like is the worst. <laughs> yeah. So so this is, uh, so yeah, so Suki Bito, Jake, as you say, you get, you're allowed to get many things wrong, but... I, as a Yokozuna, I am responsible for your doing well and improving because if you – anything that you do that is wrong, I am shamed because I am the higher-ranked person. So <laughs> Of course. This this punishment is going to – this is it's for your betterment. And uh, where I got this inspiration uh, was actually from uh, from Gabby, the the, oh. the uh, uh -oh. Ry Ryan's wife. So the Ryan's she had, wife. Yeah, the, the wife. <laughs> <laughs> She had the great idea. She is actually uh, very more probably sophisticated and she's uh, better at us. everything than all of us. Yeah, it, uh, agreed. So she like had the great idea. <laughs> she had she had the great idea of uh, actually doing a spoken word kind of style. I don't know if you've seen those videos of where they get really into speaking some poetry. Like uh, poetry kind. Of, oh no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So she had the great idea of that you have to perform a, a spoken word poetry style slam. I'm gonna throw in the slam there. I'm not sure what constitutes a poetry have slam. To. Yeah. Oh, so I've already got I some ideas. Spoken I'm, word this is this. I, people slam. are gonna sprain the sprain something with how hard they're cringing at this. I'm, I I got some <laughs> ideas already. Actually, perfect. Okay. That's, That's gonna good. be bad. I I'm I'm curious with this one. Does anybody yeah. have a fedora I could borrow? <laughs> I do. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> of course it's me. <laughs> I do. I might need that. Yes, thank you. Uh, any any particular subject that Jake needs to focus on, or is it a uh, dealer's choice? You know what? I'm gonna leave it to dealer's choice. I uh, this is. I would hate to do this myself, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna throw any more uh, many more uh, things on it. Uh, however, you figure uh... it out. <laughs> Give me, okay. give me some, give me some good poetry slam yeah. that I can snap to at the end of it. Ooh, yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And your other order of business, Flarek. Yeah. All right. Because some of us are really good at predicting uh, who's gonna <laughs> win. I, uh, I actually the second time you shall winner, and so we have. So last time was, I think it was a movie scene was the punishment we had for Mac. Yes. But I want no part of figuring out which scene to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but luckily my page, the patrons had my back. Uh, we were able to put this to a poll. We had multiple rounds voting with, uh, because I am not some chump who tries to have not fair voting systems. So, yeah. but we, uh, we did come up with a winner. I know people were waiting for bated breath, which scene, but the, uh, scene I ended up with, the, the scene that ended up the winner was from Office Space. The meeting of the Bobs, and so that was the task that was given to <laughs> given to Mac to perform. And it sounds like he has a uh, he has like a he has a he has an answer for us. He has a result. Yes. Yeah. What did I you do. do, Mac? Well, I wanted to give the fans what they wanted, and in this case, they said the meeting of the Bobs. So I thought, which meeting of the Bobs? There were several meeting of the Bobs. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do all of them. So in any instance where there was oh a Bob, whether that was Bob Porter or Bob Slidonomaru, as I came to call him, <laughs> they were included. It ended up being about an 11 minute scene. So yeah. I, this, what? <laughs> yeah, it was so, 11 minutes in length. Wait Mac, a second. Mac has wait just a second. rewritten every single scene with those two characters in Office Space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why it took a little while. I was like, 
all right, I'll do this, and I'm gonna have fun with this. So, so like, you you this. turned in your homework late because you did more homework than you were asked to do, and then he wanted Correct. extra credit to make up for the points he was getting yeah. deducted yeah. for going late. Hey, it worked. <laughs> we award you no points. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Billy Madison special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I won't I won't go the full Billy Madison quote unless you deserve it, but I do have that one memorized for. <laughs> At some point in my life, I'm going to need to whip that out on somebody that I need to brutally take down. How has somebody <laughs> on this podcast not deserved it in the past seven years? I don't I'm know. I'm really saving. That's the kind of thing you can pull out like once in a lifetime because it will be remembered forever. True. That 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 whole speech really impacts on the soul. Jake is Anyways, waiting for though. Ozeki Oho to lay that on me. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, your podcast but opinions I... are the dumbest thing. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But I don't I don't think we're going to subject everybody to the full 11 minutes here. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that at the end. But uh, yeah, Mac did send me a, a shortened version. So the scene that was actually asked of oh, you, I believe, is what we're going to be listening well, to. Well, you said meeting of the bobs. I'm like, well, I'll do them all. <laughs> they clipped a very specific three and a half minute scene, Mac. <laughs> and and Max is still longer. Yeah, uh, so... it, is, it, is, it is longer. <laughs> <laughs> only only by like 20 seconds, but it is still longer. All right, so I got that queued up. We ready to go? All right, here goes. Here is uh, Heia Space. In a hallway at Inichi Tachiai Heia, Peter Goyama enters in a summer yukata. <laughs> Peter! Oh, my Kelly Yumi. What the hell's going on, man? I just came in to get my cell phone, and I'm not going to stay. The sun is out, and I don't want to lose it. What? Peter, you're in deep shit. You were supposed to come in and practice at dawn today. What were you doing? My Kelly Yumi? <laughs> I went for a walk, a long walk, enjoying the city and parks in the daytime, and it was everything that I thought it could be. Well, I hope you have a better story than that for Lumber Nosato. You know you're supposed to be having your interview with the Yobidashi right now. Who? What? What's gotten into you? Oh, yeah, right. The JSA guys. Got it. What? You, 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 you gotta postpone it, man. Tell them you were sick or, or making chanko. It, it, something. <laughs> no way. I feel great. Peter walks into the dojo, where the two bobs are conducting their interviews. The next wrestler looks like a uh, Peter Goyama. Peter enters the room. Ah, oh, well, all right. <laughs> we were just talking about you. You must be uh, Peter Goyama. Uh-huh. Terrific. I'm Bob Slidonomaru, and this is my associate, Bob Portokigi. Hi, Bob. Bob? Yeah, why don't you uh, grab a seat and join us for a minute? You see, what we're trying to do here... It's just trying to get a feel for how Sekitori spend their day. So, if you would, would you just walk us through, you know, a typical day f for you? Yeah. Great. Well, I generally come in last to the dojo for practice. I use the side door because the slide has extra wax, and that way Lumber Nosato can't hear me. Uh, after that, I just sort of fade out and stretch for about an hour. Yeah, but, but, fade out? Yeah, I just stare at the clay and stay behind other rickshi as we stretch. But I move around and do keiko and butsukari, so it looks like I'm trying. I'll probably do that for about an hour, and same with the after-lunch practice, too. I'd probably say in a given week, I probably only do about 15 hours of actual sumo. Uh, Peter, <laughs> would you be a good sport and uh, indulge us and tell us a little more? <laughs> sure. Let me tell you something about being a Suke Bito. You see here, Peter Goyama lays it all out in a casual manner, reclining on his cushion as he does so. The thing is, Bob, it's not that I'm lazy. It's just that I just don't care. Don't... don't care? It's a problem of motivation, all right? Now, if I work my ass off and Anichi Tachiai Hei gets another top-level rickshi, I have to share Suke Bito. So where's the motivation? We're bloated as it is, and the stress on the low ranks is already unbearable. And here's another thing, Bob. I serve as a Sukebito to eight different rickshi right now. I beg your pardon? <laughs> eight rickshi. Eight? Eight, Bob. So that means when it's time for a basho, I have eight different rickshi to prepare things for and yell at me about it. That's my real motivation. It's to not be hassled. That and the fear that I'll lose my rank. But you know something, Bob? That'll only make someone work just hard enough to not get demoted. Would you bear with me? You know, just for a minute? Okay. 
what if, and believe me, this is hypothetical, but what if you were offered some kind of JSA stock option and equity in future Kabu sharing programs? Would that do anything for you? I don't know. I guess. Listen, I'm going to go. It's been really nice talking to you guys about all this. Oh, absolutely. Pleasure's on all this side of the doyo. Trust me. Good luck with breaking the hay up. I hope your trades go really well. That's I how like <laughs> existentially uncomfortable that whole movie is about working in an office. Oh. I like oh. the the comparison to managers and sukebitas. I have yeah. eight <laughs> different rickshi um sukebitas. Didn't it, it, it seem yeah. fitting? I was like, oh my yeah. god, yes. <laughs> no. Well done. Now I'm just reminded that I got to go watch that movie again. I, I watch it periodically, and every time it just like ruins my whole week of motivation at work. Yep. <laughs> I did throw there, there. There was an extra scene I did throw in, and that was with Milton. Just one just extra be, scene. Well, yo, know, because <laughs> at the very end, when they have the the final meeting of the Bobs, they bring up Milton. So I'm like. Well, now I have to do the lumber, the the introduction scene of Milton. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't have context. Exactly. So, anyways, Max did the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, my voice was shot for days. <laughs> Not surprising. Uh, Flair, how's that, that mystery good. coming? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, the great. That is the mystery in itself. <laughs> how that's Where is oh. the mystery? He yeah. got us. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's so writing it wait and as find the out. months go by. Indeed. <laughs> so wait and find out. Wait and find out. All right. Let's move on to our bold predictions. As always, we're going to start with bad predictions. Dachi I blog. They said no one goes Kyojo for the entire Basho. Terra no Fuji, Kid Bozan, Sudagisho, Simazu Umi, Takakesho, and Toby Zaru would all have something to say oh, otherwise. Those guys don't know anything about sumo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Beast <laughs> Beast Monarch predicted a Roga U show. He finished with a seven and eight record. Uh Rod Lunsford predicted a Koto Nawaka U show in a playoff. Fortune the here's the thing with these predictions. Something absolutely crazy happened this Ba show, <laughs> and nobody went that bold. Everybody went. Everybody went with what you would expect to happen. Yeah. Ooh, Kota no Wacha Yusho, bad Hirishima Yusho, Hoshori Yusho, Terra no Fuji Yusho, and all kind of centered around that. So there's not really any amazing picks. So the yeah. <laughs> the T-shirt winner this time is just vibes, I guess. <laughs> vibes. More good that than bad. Uh-huh. To be right. So so yeah, I guess the the ones that we're calling out as bad are not as bad as usual. The ones that yeah. we're calling out as good are not as good as usual. <laughs> And the weird you show, but we still yeah. got to We still got to shame at least a few people for being yeah. incorrect. Mm. Yeah, not no one going Kujo. Now that's a bad touch. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty. That, <laughs> that one's bad, no matter what. Basho. Uh, Grendley Puff predicted a Wakamoto Haru you show, and Alice Smutney predicted Terano Fuji you show, uh, Takakejo Kujo during the tournament and demotion. Wakamoto Haru double digits. Roga three and twelve. Roga. Three times, like two times. Why are people caring about Roga? Uh, yeah, Gono Yama, <laughs> Gono Yama, and Giant Killing Style Jun Yu Show. Close, <laughs> not really, not really, well, but close. Hey, Gono Yama. Oh, you're right, you're right. He was one match away from a Jun Yu Show. I take it back. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, good predictions. Josh Schaff, uh, Koto Nawaka with ten wins. Takayasu not Kyujo and ten wins. Tanner no Fuji thirteen win Yu Show though, and Ono Sato only eight wins. So half just, and half. Yeah, half and half. That's about that's what it takes to get in the good side of things this time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh Hazel Rig, all Ozeki get Kachi Koshi and Hoshoryu wins the Yu Show. 75% ain't bad on this yeah. Bajo. show. <laughs> uh Eggman's asshole. Uh Taka no show <laughs> gets a Kinboshi en route to a six and nine finish. That name sneaks up on I, me every time. I know. <laughs> that's why I was laughing. But pretty uh, close, actually. Taka no show finish though. five and no, ten. No, yeah. no, not bad. Yeah. But uh, I'll be damned if I'm sending another T-shirt to Eggman's asshole <laughs> <laughs> anytime soon. Uh, and Colin Maffey said to Tommy Fuji, do better than last Basho, get his Kachikoshi. Tommy Fuji finished with an eight and seven record. And that brings us to our T-shirt winner, somebody who I think wanted it more than anybody else. And it took this Basho of to <laughs> not great predictions 
for their persistence, good but not great predictions to finally get them over the hump <laughs> in some of them have been greater great. status. Yeah, some have been great. <laughs> but sometimes sometimes we have an absolute all timer of a prediction. It's like, well, that guy's got to get it. Yeah. And so, yes, this person has been very unlucky. Yes. And so this one today. <laughs> Isn't going to get it all right, but like I said, this time it's good enough, and we kind of want this person to get a t-shirt. Uh, so, <laughs> assets, you did it. It's time. Finally! You finally did it. <laughs> Slip it to our DMs and give us your t-shirt information and address. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of ruined that a little bit. <laughs> and true, st- true GSP style. Like, hello. <laughs> or whatever whatever else you want to slip it to Or whatever DMs. less We're suggestive open. phrase <laughs> to uh, send us your information. <laughs> But their prediction first, uh, he uh-huh. they predicted that all of the following Rikshi would get double digit wins. And they said, Ono Sato, Takeyasu, Takeru Fuji. They also threw in Ryuden. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? Three out of four ain't bad. And then he's, <laughs> they also said all Jurio promotees will get a losing record except for Takeru Fuji and Roga losing record. I don't remember them all off the top of my head. Uh, Kita Nawaka losing record. Dayamami losing record. Mm-hmm. Ishiki Fuji eight and seven, just off by one. But once again, two seventy five percent is better than the other seventy five percent that we had earlier. So you <laughs> win the t shirt. You got it. <laughs> a uh, a prediction, a, a bold predictions t shirt with a uh, without a Yokozuna in this basho kind of a situation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. This is def- this is the Migashir seventeen winning the Yuko yeah. of bold predictions. <laughs> There's no asterisk on it, but there are some special issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations either way. I know you've been playing a long time. Indeed. Yep. Uh, then we move on to the GSB awards and it, what might be a first. Larrick, could you read your nominee? <gasps> There you go. Eric submitted the, an award. Wow. The Ura Secretly Stands Teretsuyoshi Award <laughs> <laughs> goes to Ura <laughs> uh, for using uh, in, uh, using uh, Ashitori to essentially win the match against Nishiki Fuji. I believe it was Nishiki. on day 10. Nishikigi. Nishikigi. Thank yeah. you. Should have uh, been an Ashitori, yeah. yeah. So uh, power, way to do it. Way to uh, just, uh, you know, give one for the, the guy you love. Way to almost... Give us our Ashitori watch, the drought that we've had so long. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But not quite. Keep on keep on doing it. Uh, and I think do that. He, he did it like either the day of or the day after Teretsu Yoshi announced his retirement. Mm-hmm. Coincidence. In honor of him. I think not. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to believe otherwise. Yeah. Probably, uh, and- but we think not. <laughs> <laughs> we think. Uh, and then we didn't we didn't really come up with a whole lot for GSB awards. So, you know, the Omni Award for everything goes to Takedu Fuji this Basho. Just yeah. <laughs> all encompassing. Just give it to Takedu Fuji. Not the most exciting, but certainly the most accurate, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the ouch award from his ankle. Outstanding performance. What, what, what else? I mean, they're all the he classic just GSB all awards. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then match of the Basho. There were plenty of exciting matches this Basho to choose from. Uh, day six, we had the t- Takeyasu versus Mitake Yumi. Old guys getting tired. One finally has to win at the end match. Uh, we had Asanoyama versus Meisei, which was a really fun back and forth belt battle that Asanoyama kind of won with a sweet reversal throw at the very end. Day 15, Kirishima versus Koto Nawaka. Uh, Kirishima bringing it for his Ozeki battle and able to take out Koto Nawaka in a very fun matchup. And then we also have Takedu Fuji versus Gonoyama, uh, just especially knowing how he got into that match. Uh, I think is why it's the Avatar the- State. Yes, <laughs> yeah. That that one for me, I would have picked that one if it was like purely from a emotional standpoint, like the most important, most tense match. But like, as far as what actually happened in the ring, yeah, I, that's not that I I voted for a different one for sure. Yeah, and so uh, winning is Kirishima versus Koto no Waka. Uh, with two out of four votes, we were fairly split on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flarek and Jake voted for Kirishima versus Koto no Waka. I put my stamp on Asanoyama versus Meisei, and Mac had Takeru Fuji versus Go no Yama. Yeah. So Kirishima versus Koto no Waka is your GSB match of the Basho. Yeah, day 15, everybody absolutely brought it. Uh, yeah. That was It was the best day of sumo by far in the, the whole tournament. And especially... Because Takeru Fuji locked up the the U show halfway through the day, we still had plenty of matches to go, and every single one of them delivered. It felt like yeah. it was just absolute <laughs> madness. Capping off with like 
a hundred percent the Ozeki versus Ozeki clash of the Titans, excellent sumo, uh, great finale, great everything. That final match of the Basho. Yeah. I, I voted for that one. That one absolutely did it for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always good. It's like, I, there's something about once you get those higher ranks that you just kind of feel the grab toss, but after pulling a good match when this happens and the, they, that Kota Nawaka, he, he understood this assignment, Kirishima as well, even though, you know, he allegedly might have other things on his mind with priorities, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, like obviously he was a little bit hurt, but like he was able to bring out like, just, uh, like just able to pull through and be able to put up a good match. And it was just, yeah. it was great. Fantastic. Yeah, because Coach Nawaka would have gotten the Jun Yu show. He would have tied the other three guys had he yep. won. So, like, the stakes right. were still pretty high for him. Yep, absolutely. Kirishima, whatever it was that made him decide to actually be Kirishima for one match, I, I'm glad he did when he did because that was awesome. Yeah. Flerick, what was hmm. your favorite moment of the Basho? Oh, my goodness. I think it has to be the point of where I started believing in Takeru Fuji when he beat Kota Nawaka. When he outpushed that big guy. So I would say <laughs> that match. All right. Back. Um, other than just watching Takaru Fuji's amazing tournament, I'm gonna go back to Atami Fuji and be like, yeah, getting that win over Takakesho and proving that yeah, he can hang with the boys. Like I wanna continue to see him improve. So mm -hmm. keep going, man. Jake. I would say the speculation between day 14 and 15 was super fun, especially because three of the four of us were hanging out in person regardless so that we could vent about it to each other. Yeah. But on between day 14 and 15, there was like like three or four different ways that the Basho could end, and all of them were like fully unprecedented. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, it was very cool to very cool to speculate, and I hadn't gotten that into I, I know that's that's generally more Ryan's thing, like the last day of the Basho figuring out like if this match, this match, this match, this match and this match happened this way, we could get a seven way playoff or, you know, things like that. That's that that's usually Ryan's realm. Yeah, there um, was no chance that was happening this no. Basho. <laughs> no, no, of course not. But there was still some really cool speculation to do. And just the fact that we happen to be hanging out anyways made it a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah. And and, and yeah, of course, it delivered. Yeah, and for me, it's just got to be Takedu Fuji sealing the deal on day 15 so that, like, all of the hype and stuff that we were feeling for the first 15 days of, like, oh, my God, could this happen? What if this actually happens? It actually happened. I actually got a, I got to send out my tweet with just, like, which is two tweets just as listing all of the records that he yeah. set in this Basho. <laughs> it's like we were hoping and anticipating for this historic once in a lifetime you show to happen and it finally happened and him fighting through what he had to fight through to get there so day 15 him actually being able to pull off the historic moment uh is my favorite moment as well uh and so props to ono sato for also being historically good but not as historic just overshadowed so. yeah. in this tournament yeah. <laughs> exactly which might might be good for him takedo mm -hmm. fuji is going to be the hot topic uh, in Japan. Everybody's going to want a piece of him, talk to him in between Basho's. Ono Sato is going to be have a lot l fewer distractions than Takedo Fuji between Basho's, which could serve him in the future. Um, <laughs> Do you think anybody's gotten a Junyu show as quickly as Ono Sato? That might be a record. Mm. I don't know. More to dive like, in uh, at a later date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like obviously it's overshadowed by the U show, but well, like, no, still, what did Ichinojo worth looking into? Ichinojo, did he get was his thirteen and two uh a June U show? It very well could have Oh been. it was. And one, two, three, four in his fifth. Okay. There you go. Okay. That's Glad we answer. solved that. Ono yep. Sato, <laughs> still pretty good though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. He's all right. He'll do. Okay, so that is going to wrap up our coverage of the Haru Basho and what a Basho it was. We've got plenty coming up for you in the meantime. As mentioned, next Saturday, the 30th at 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, we will have our GSB patron live stream that episode will be released shortly after i'm sure jake is going to have some amazumo 
uh, episodes highlighting uh, his travels that he's going to have throughout the month of April and the events coming up there. We're going to have hopefully a special Bonds K prediction episode coming out towards the end of April when Guess the Bonds K uh, applications are closed. Uh, and then... I think that's all Grand Sumo Breakdown we're going to have in between Bashos. Uh, we're going be... to work on doing some more coverage with uh, trading cards and newsletters and stuff like that, but that's yeah, not necessarily yeah, yeah. on a on a clock. That's right, yeah. I, I think we will open up. We'll go back in the time machine again. Mac and I open up another uh, box of Sumo trading cards. I think it would be 2020 Series 2 is where okay. we would be back to. So I, I, I do plan on doing that uh, in April as well. So until all of that, thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high. Keep moving forward. Bye. In the city of Osaka Mori, the sumo heir Enichi Tachiai has been riding high on the success as an organization. However, after the retirement of the old Oyakata, the lackluster Yokozuna has stated they cannot maintain the Heia's success due to their bloated ranks. Indeed, the Heia has had many Makuuchi rank wrestlers and few Makushita rank and below to serve as Sukebito. At the request of the Yokozuna, the JSA is now considering who is essential to Enichi Tachiai's future. Good. Well, uh, I'd like to, uh, welcome the Yobidashi from the JSA Administration Division, uh, Bob Slidonomaru. Yeah, uh, he is, uh, a consultant. Yeah, he's a consultant, and, uh, he'll be helping us out a little here, asking some questions, making sure things go a little more smoothly. Yeah. Oh, and uh, remember, next Friday is Hawaiian Mawashi Day. So, you know, if you want to go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian print Mawashi, and uh, as always, go traditional. I, 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 I don't care if they cut me from the hair either, because I, I, I told Lumber Nosato that if, if he moves my tatami mat one more time, then, then I'm, I'm quitting. I'm going to quit. And I told Mac, too, that because they've moved my tatami mat four times, I, I used to be by the window where I could see all the cherry blossoms, and, and, and they were pretty. But, but then they switched me from the oil-based chonmage wax to the sugar-based chonmage wax, but I kept the oil-based. It makes my hair crisp and black and slick, so they can't make me not use it. And, but the hairdresser says we have to switch to sugar-based to go green, but, but the, the hair is black, which green doesn't make sense, and the hair is oily, which the ants slide off, and, and, and the sugar attracts ants, and the hair can't have ants because we sleep on the floor. And we oh, 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 okay, Melton. No, 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 it's not okay. And if they take my hair gel, I, I, I've set this building okay, on fire. Okay, that's that's great. Time to go stretch. Bob Slidomaru and Bob Portokigi are interviewing Tom Awashikowski. So what you do during a basho is you take water from the bucket, offer it to the next wrestler about to fight, then you take the ladle back and place it in the bucket. Y yes, y yes, yes, that's right. Well, then I gotta ask. Why can't the next rikshi just take the water from the bucket themselves? Why do you have to hand them the ladle? Huh? Well, uh, I'll tell you why. It's tradition. And the new rikshi to the ring need that cleansing water before they fight. Aha. So you physically bless the water. The bucket that's been sitting there has been purified exclusively by you. Well, no. It, it's consecrated before it gets ringside. Huh. Well, then you must physically get in the ring, right? You have a bout, and then you leave? Well, no. But I, I mean, sometimes. Well, what would you say you do ringside? Well, look, I already told you. I hand them the God-blessed water so the new rickshi to the ring are purified. I have traditions to think about. I'm good with traditions. I'm good with ladling out water. Can't you understand that? What the hell is wrong with you people? Tom Awashikowski exits the doyo room, and Michele Yumi, bull Azuma Fuji, enters. Well, let's see. You're Michele Yumi... 
Bolazuma Fuji? Is that your real family name? Yeah. Are you in any relation to the former Yokozuna, Mike Heliyumi, Bolazuma Fuji? It's just a coincidence. <laughs> to be honest with you, I love his sumo. I do. I'm a big Mike Heliyumi, Bolazuma Fuji fan. For my money, I don't think it gets any better than when he slams his opponents down in the ring. I really don't. I mean, you must really love his sumo. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's, he's, pre he's pretty good, uh, I guess. You're goddamn right he is. So tell me, what is your favorite Kimarite of his? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I, I, I sort of like them all. <laughs> I feel the exact same way. But it must be hard for you. I mean, having the same name as him. I celebrate the guy's entire career. <laughs> but anyway, let's get down to business, Mike Hiliyumi Bolazuma Fuji. You, you can just call me Mike. In a hallway at Inichi Tachiaiheya, Peter Goyama enters in a summer yukata. Peter! Mike Hiliyumi. What the hell's going on, man? I just came in to get my cell phone and I'm not going to stay. The sun is out and I don't want to lose it. What? Peter, you're in deep shit. You were supposed to come in and practice at dawn today. What were you doing? My Kelly Yumi, I went for a walk. A long walk. Enjoying the city and parks in the daytime, and it was everything that I thought it could be. Well, I hope you have a better story than that for Lumber Nosato. You know you're supposed to be having your interview with the Yobidashi right now. Who? What? What's gotten into you? Oh, yeah, right. The JSA guys. Got it. What? You, 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 you gotta postpone it, man. Tell them you were sick or, or making chanko. It, it, something. <laughs> no way. I feel great. Peter walks into the dojo where the two bobs are conducting their interviews. The next wrestler looks like a uh, Peter Goyama. Peter enters the room. Ah, oh, well, all right. <laughs> we were just talking about you. You must be uh, Peter Goyama. Uh-huh. Terrific. I'm Bob Slidonomaru, and this is my associate, Bob Portokigi. Hi, Bob. Bob? Yeah, why don't you uh, grab a seat and join us for a minute? You see, what we're trying to do here is just trying to get a feel for how Sekitori spend their day. So, if you would, would you just walk us through, you know, a typical day f for you? Yeah. Great. Well, I generally come in last of the dojo for practice. I use the side door because the slide has extra wax, and that way Lumber Nosato can't hear me. Uh, after that, I just sort of fade out and stretch for about an hour. Fade out? Yeah, I just stare at the clay and stay behind other rikshi as we stretch. But I move around and do keiko and butsukari, so it looks like I'm trying. I'll probably do that for about an hour, and same with the after-lunch practice, too. I'd probably say in a given week, I probably only do about 15 hours of actual sumo. Uh... Peter, would you be a good sport and uh, indulge us and tell us a little more? <laughs> sure. Let me tell you something about being a suke bito. You see here, Peter Goyama lays it all out in a casual manner, reclining on his cushion as he does so. The thing is, Bob, it's not that I'm lazy. It's just that I just don't care. Don't... don't care? It's a problem of motivation, all right? Now, if I work my ass off and Anichi Tachiai Hei gets another top-level rikshi, I have to share Suke Bito. So where's the motivation? We're bloated as it is, and the stress on the low ranks is already unbearable. And here's another thing, Bob. I serve as a Suke Bito to eight different rikshi right now. I beg your pardon? Eight rikshi. Eight? Eight, Bob. So that means when it's time for a basho, I have eight different rikshi to prepare things for and yell at me about it. That's my real motivation. It's to not be hassled. That and the fear that I'll lose my rank. But you know something, Bob? That'll only make someone work just hard enough to not get demoted. Would you bear with me? You know, j just for a minute? <laughs> okay. What if, and believe me, this is hypothetical, but what if you were offered some kind of JSA stock option and equity in future Kabu sharing programs? Would that do anything for you? I don't know. I guess. Listen, I'm going to go... It's been really nice talking to you guys about all this. Oh, absolutely. Pleasure's on all this side of the dojo. Trust me. Good luck with breaking the hay up. I hope your trades go really well. Now sitting in the dojo room, Mac and Bisei Lumber Nosato are talking to the two Bobs. 
Right, so there's three more people we can easily lose. <laughs> then there's Tom Awashikowski. He's useless. Gone. Sounds good to me. Here's a peculiar one. Milton Oyama Wasa no Mama. Who's he? You know, goggles on his face, mumbles a lot. Oh. Yeah, we can't find any official record of him being a current wrestler here. I looked into it a little more deeply and found what happened was he never signed the papers officially joining the Heia and hasn't done a basho. Ever. And no one's ever made him wrestle. But through a glitch in record keeping of the Heia, he still has a mat. I went ahead and fixed the glitch. Great. So, um, Milton Oyama has been let go? Uh, just a second there, Shinpan. We, uh, we fixed the glitch, so he wouldn't be receiving a mat to sleep on anymore, so it'll just work itself out naturally. We always like to avoid confrontation whenever possible. The problem is solved from here on out. Uh, we should move on to, uh, Peter Goyama. I had the chance to meet this young man, and boy, does he have Sanyaku standing written all over him. Ooh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. Yeah, uh, he's been real flaky lately, and I'm not sure that he's the caliber person you want for joy level. He's been having some, uh, problems with his Sukebito duties. I'll handle this. We feel that the problem isn't with Peter Goyama. Mm -mm. It's that you haven't challenged him enough to get him really motivated. There it is. Yeah, well, I'm just not sure about that now. All right, Bise, let me ask you a quick question here. How many wrestlers in this Heia serve as Sukebido? Yeah, uh, 